This is Robert Kraft, and I'm coming to you live on SNN Live, and we're here at the Sedoti Spring 2016 Emerging Growth Convention in New York City. With me right now is Tony Guleman from Ballard Power Systems. The symbol is BLDP. Tony, welcome to SNN Live. Thank you very much. Appreciate being here. It's great to have you. So for our audience, let's get an overview of the company, and then we'll go from there. Great. Thank you. So Ballard Power uh, is a fuel cell company. We're located in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, we have about 500 employees listed on NASDAQ, as you say, but we've been around uh, for a little over 30 years now, publicly traded for uh, 23 years. So our history is in uh, PEM fuel cell technology. Uh, for those who may not be familiar with fuel cells, it is the technology that was the, uh, the genesis was in the automotive industry. So Ballard in its early days was very much focused on fuel cells for development for the automotive industry. Of course, that's taken a lot longer to develop, as many know. So in about 2005, we reoriented our uh, business to near-term commercial applications. So today, Ballard's business is built around two platforms, a power products platform and a technology solutions platform. In power products, we focus on selling fuel cell stacks and systems into the motive market, largely the bus, the transit bus market here in the US, in Europe, and, and increasingly in China. Uh, the forklift market, we're a stack supplier to a company here in the United States. We have a portable powered business and we also sell into the telecom backup power space. On the technology solution side, Ballard sells, we have about 250 th uh, people, uh, employees who are engineers and scientists. We use these uh, employees. We have customers, uh, increasing customers in automotive and non-automotive who pay us to help them with their fuel cell programs. Uh, to help them advance their program, so whether it's the fuel cell automotive industry. So this is a very attractive business for us in terms of enabling others to uh, launch new programs in fuel cells. So that's a bit about us. Okay, so uh, let, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, what, what I want to know is a, let, a little bit more about the technology. You know, how is what you're developing different than what's currently out there? Sure. So in the fuel cell space, and uh, there are a variety of technologies even within fuel cells. Ours is a PEM, a proton exchange membrane, which is a technology that is very much geared towards, I mentioned, automotive. So it's, think about a technology uh, or a, a application that where you want to turn something on and off fairly frequently where it needs to come to power immediately automotive, bus, forklift. So Ballard's focus is principally in those markets, and I would distinguish that from some of the other fuel cell companies that people may have heard of, like Bloom Energy or Fuel Cell, which are really uh, uh, 24 by 7 utility type power generation where it turns on, stays on, doesn't go off. So we don't compete in that space, but that would distinguish us. Of course, our biggest competition is really incumbent technologies, batteries, diesel gen set. So what we're really doing is displacing incumbent technologies in the areas that I've mentioned. I want to know a little bit more about the products and the technology solutions that you mentioned. So uh, can you elaborate on that and how they're helping your customer base? Sure. So at the heart of fuel cells is that they are a clean technology, zero emissions. So from a, from a customer point of view, obviously clean energy is a key driver. Uh, so if, if thinking about the automotive industry or the, or, or the bus market, thinking about the pollution, particularly in China. So from a customer perspective, looking at, at, at clean alternative energy as a key driver. But, but at the end of the day, it's all about economics. So for us, it's, it's demonstrating to a customer that the total value proposition uh, or total cost of ownership uh, relative to diesel or batteries makes sense for them. So we, again, we're competing with... Uh, diesel engines in, in buses. So it's, are we clean? Are we competitive on a price basis? And that's what's, in, that's what's changing the market. That's really the tilting point right now is it does make sense economically. It's starting to make sense economically. Okay. So, and, and you also mentioned that you sell currently in the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what markets are you going after other than those? Yeah. So th I would say right now our biggest market actually is outside of North America. So we are very active in Europe in the bus market, transit bus market. So again, selling fuel cell engines for the transit buses in Europe. The biggest growing market right now is China. Uh, 12 months ago, we were selling no product in China. And in the last, uh, literally in the last six months, we've signed uh, almost $50 million of orders in the Chinese market 
in the bus market. So think about large transit buses down to very sm to the smaller bus buses. And this is really being driven by the Chinese government. The pollution is horrendous in China, and the government's decided you know they're going to do something about it. So we've signed four separate deals for buses. We've uh, done some deals in the tram market, some development pro uh, pro programs rather in the tram market. So that's really the big growth market. We'll do upwards of 30% 30, uh, 30 of our revenue in 2016 will be uh, out of China. And, and how did you get into the Chinese market? It's not easy from what I understand. No, it's not. And, and uh, we had a little misstep actually in China. Uh, again, part of it's finding uh, partners and, and, and viable partners. So right now we have, uh, we've been successful in, in signing four deals with four partners. And we rely on those partners to access local government funding, uh, as well as the end customer. So most of these, of course, will be municipalities that are, or cities that are uh, rolling out bus programs. So what we are working with them to find a government money and to, to ultimately get the product in the field. So entirely reliant on our, on our commercial partners to do that. And where does the company currently manufacture its product? Yeah, so right now, we, uh, we've been in Vancouver uh, since the beginning of history, so we manufacture all of our fuel cell stacks and systems in Vancouver. The one exception is we do some assembly for backup power modules in Mexico, but right now, virtually everything is in, in Vancouver, and, uh, and we ship out, out of Vancouver around the world. And, and how does it actually work? I mean, is it like a retrofit? I mean, you know, you're talking to some, I'm admittedly a novice, but mm -hmm. how does it actually work when, okay, so you do the deal, you build the stacks, do they just are able to fit it onto the bus? I mean, how does that actually work? Yeah, it's a great question. So a, a fuel cell bus uh, looks a lot like a normal bus, but it's a, that would be oversimplifying it. There is a need to have a software. Uh, it works with an electric drive system. If you're thinking about a diesel electric bus, in some, in some respects, you are replacing the diesel engine in a diesel electric bus with a fuel cell. However, you do need to deal with software integration issues, uh, storage. A fuel cell uh, runs on hydrogen, direct hydrogen, so you need fuel cell storage capacity tanks uh, in a bus. So part of the challenge has been getting bus OEMs uh, to develop a, a, relatively speaking, new configuration for buses. But there are now over 10 uh, bus manufacturers in the world that actually do manufacture and make fuel cell buses. So not as simple as just a retrofit, but it's becoming a, a little less complex than it, than it was a number of years ago. And, and to just take a step back to, I, I want to go over the, the, an overview of the market itself. You know, how, how big is this market? Yeah, it's a, it's a huge market, and, and a, we're, we're often reluctant to talk about total addressable market because they're in the billions of dollars. But certainly if you think about the transit bus market, the, you know, the buses you see running around New York or any other major urban area, there's several hundred thousand a year of buses put on, put on the road every year. The fuel cell bus market today, there's only about 100 fuel cell buses on the road today. So you think about the relative size of the market opportunity, even in the bus market is huge, and our current market penetration is low. The forklift market's another great example. The forklift market today, there's... Uh, Less than less than ten thousand fuel cell forklift driven, you know, fuel cell powered forklifts today operating. There is again hundreds of thousands of fuel cell uh, forklifts sold every year. So we're talking about addressable markets in the billions of dollars, where the fuel cell pro, you know, uh, products today represent you know single digit, low single digit percentages. I mean, is a potential strategy you know working with like the caterpillars of the world to get their to get your stuff in their you know, in their trucks? Yeah, it's a, again, an excellent question. That's really been the, uh, the I'd say, the chicken and egg uh, challenge because the, the the, right now Caterpillar, frankly, is a competitor. They're, in the de they're a, an engine company making diesel engines. One could say the same about Cummins, for example. So what, I, I think what one might see is as fuel cells become a, a, a more accepted power source, you might see companies like Caterpillar, like Cummins, who are already in the, in the space, or some large battery companies say, geez, I think it's time to put a fuel cell, you know, fuel cell engine in the product portfolio. Uh, so I wouldn't be the least bit surprised that you might see some of the larger, you know, again, GEs, Caterpillars, Cummins, that might start to look at the product as an interesting product in their portfolio. 
So what's your background? How did you get into this? Yeah, my, I'm, a, I'm the CFO of the company, so I'm not a technology guy by a long shot. But, uh, but you know, Vancouver, Canada is a, a bit of a hotbed for, for clean energy and technology. So uh, I came into this industry. I, my background has been in energy. I, I worked for the Caterpillar uh, organization for a cat dealer. So I, I've had a, a pretty ba a broad background, but I was intrigued by clean energy. I thought the, uh, the time is right. I think there's a bit of demand and pull. So I came into it uh, you know, with a lot of enthusiasm, thinking this is a, a very, uh, the right time to join the industry. Obviously, capital formation is important, being able to raise money and grow the business. Uh, we are very acquisition-oriented. So my background is, you know, I have a lot of M&A experience. So I, I, I'm a bit pumped by the whole opportunity. And so uh, for me, it's, this is a, just a great time to get on board. Okay. So to wrap up, you know, going in for the rest of 2016, from what you can tell me, what are some of the goals and milestones for the company? Sure. So we've, we've, we've stated a, a couple. We haven't given any official guidance, but certainly one of them is we are on, uh, you know, we're hell-bent to get to, to profitability. It won't happen in 16, uh, and we haven't said it would, but we are working hard this year to lower our cost base. Uh, we did announce on our year-end call that we intend to take some four to five million of our cost base out this year. That's a critical execution strategy to get to break even. The other one is executing on China. We, we're going to be delivering this year upwards of $25 million worth of product into the Chinese market. A lot of these products are new. So ensuring that we get the product right the first time, get it to the customer on time, and achieve some of our revenue targets. So uh, really, I'd say around China and cost reduction are the two big critical drivers for, for 2016. And that'll set the platform for 17 to a year where we hope to get to EBITDA break even in 17. And where can our audience go and find more information about the company? Yeah, so they can find, we have a, a website, www.ballard.com. Uh, certainly, it's a, it's a very robust website. Please uh, uh, go there or reach out to myself directly. Uh, I'm happy to take calls at any time. Great. And that's www.ballard.com. My name is Robert Kraft, and I'm here at the Sedoti Spring 2016 Emerging Growth Convention in New York City. With me again has been Tony Gullian from... Ballard Power Systems, the symbol is BLDP. Thank you so much, Tony, for coming on. Thanks, Robert.